Hello everybody, it is Natalie and we are so long overdue for our Reese Witherspoon book club review. So let's just dive right on in. Now this video is going to be a little different than the other videos I've done because we have not actually had a video since September. I decided not to read the October book. The October book was supposed to be a non-fiction book about how to make your marriage better. And yes, I am married, so I can't sit there and go, well, I'm not married, it doesn't apply to me. But I know it doesn't apply to so many of you. So I really was like, eh, I don't think that really fits in. It's a little left field for what we like to talk about. So I decided to skip October. And then when November, I had so many health issues and things going on. So for this book club review, we are going to discuss the September book, the makeup book that I did, and then I'm going to introduce the November book, the December book, and another makeup book I'm going to do. So we will be discussing five books for this book club review, and we will also be discussing five books next month in January. Now, the September book was The Secrets We Kept by Laura Prescott. Guys, this is another one of those books that is a must read. I am just shocked that this book is a debut novel. And if you read it, you will be right along with me going, this is a debut novel because as you read it, it really sounds like somebody who's a seasoned writer. This is a historical fiction book and it has got three really strong female main characters. And this takes place both in the Soviet Union and also in America. So we're kind of bouncing around the globe with these characters. And the whole idea of this book is trying to get the book, and I know everybody's heard of it, Dr. Zhivago, to get it out to the masses to be read because people believe that it really could be like a change the world, change the way people look at the world kind of a book. Unfortunately, Russia or the Soviet Union does not want this book out. They want this book squashed, which brings us to our first main character, which is Olga, who was the mistress of the author named Boris Pasternak. Let me look if I'm saying that right. Yeah, Boris Pasternak. I hope I'm not butchering that name. She actually went to prison for a amount of time for not divulging, you know, about the book, where can they find it, what is it about. So she really did and went through a lot of hard times and you learn a lot about her story in this book. We also have two other characters. Um, we have two other characters, Sally and Irina, who are American. They are in the typist pool for the CIA and they are both secretly also CIA spies, which the whole idea of women spies was really exciting. And they are also working trying to get copies of this book. They're trying to get copies of this book out so that they can get it published outside of the Soviet Union, even though uh, at some point they do want to get it published in the Soviet Union. So much going on in this book. I know it sounds like I told you a whole lot. I really haven't. Um, I'm just telling you, that's kind of like the main plot. There are so many subplots in this that are amazing as well. One of the subplots is very much like the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo if you know what I mean. If you've read that book, then you know what I'm talking about. Now it's a subplot, but there is a situation very similar to that book in this book, which so if you enjoy The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, I cannot imagine you not loving this book. Not only because it has that same kind of story in one of the sections, but it's just about strong women, what they're having to go through, what, you know, what is not allowed, what people have to hide. Um, it's just a very powerful book. And this book, I'm seeing it everywhere. I don't know if it was like Newsweek or Time, but it's popping up. People all over are writing articles about this book and how great it is. And it really is, guys. If you guys love historical fiction, you should read it. If you're not really into historical fiction, maybe you think historical fiction can be kind of slow, this book is not slow. It is a very fast pace. We're talking about the CIA and spies and it's a very fast pace, but I really highly recommend this book. I gave this book five stars. I can't imagine someone not giving it five stars. Now my makeup book was Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. And I am kicking myself because this is one of those books that's been on my bookshelf for a while. I think I've had it up once or twice to be my makeup book for my Reese Witherspoon book club and then switch to another book to have as my makeup book. And guys, I thought this was wonderful. I'm really kicking myself for waiting so long to read it. For those of you who don't know, Eleanor struggles with appropriate social skills. She lives kind of a very loner life. We learned very early on that something really weird or traumatic happened to her, but 
she doesn't really talk about it and the book doesn't really talk about it we just get hints um, all around that something horrible happened in her youth and you know that it affects her and is probably one of the main reasons the why she is so socially awkward but then one night her and a co-worker named Raymond are walking out of work and they see an old man that has either I think he's fallen down and he needs some medical attention and she kind of gets drawn into this all these social situations she was not planning to be in by helping this man and the man's family is very appreciative and so they come calling on her and inviting her out and her and Raymond also you know start a kind of a friendship and I just I really enjoyed it and the reason I think I didn't pick it up for so long is because the synopsis being oh it's a woman who has socially awkward and she gets pulled out of her shell and I'm like Eh, because so many books nowadays when you read the synopsis it sounds just so amazing like oh and she's a magician and she's going to time travel and she's a, and you're and to me this one sounded the synopsis did not sound super exciting and I forgot something that I already knew is that if you have great writing, if you have an author who's going to really make great characters, you don't need a synopsis or a plot that's got, you know, just crazy stuff going on to be a really good and interesting book. This definitely was a page turner. I think I completed it in like a couple days. I totally was in from like the third page. I thought she was very likable. And of course, when you get down to what she's been through, very, just very traumatic, very heartbroken but just a beautiful story and like I said highly recommend it for all of those out there who don't like it I would like to know why didn't you like it I really I thought that she was really going to be kind of a jerk and I didn't think she was I felt she was awkward and it came across as being a jerk but I thought she was a great character so if you didn't like this book please let me know why because I thought it was great I gave this one five stars and I don't give a lot of book five stars all right so since I decided to skip the October book I'm going to introduce the November book which is The Giver of Stars by Jojo I don't know that Moyes I don't know I know she's written other books in fact I think she's written other books that have been made into movies but I haven't seen those either um, I thought she did mostly romance but this definitely doesn't sound like a romance or if it has romance it's not like the main idea of it this is also historical fiction but a completely different kind of historical fiction and our main character is Alice Wright who she marries this handsome man she lives in England and she feels very kind of stifled and claustrophobic so she ends up moving out to Kentucky with her new husband but once she gets to the small town in Kentucky she still feels feels kind of stifled and claustrophobic and you know doesn't know but just know she's not happy so this is where it gets really cool so she signs up to be part of this traveling library that was commissioned by Eleanor Roosevelt which is really interesting I never knew Eleanor Roosevelt commissioned traveling libraries which are exactly what they sound like it's people are on horseback I'm assuming horseback um, who are going all around and bringing books to people who otherwise would not have books. So that it just sounds amazing. And there's other female characters in this book as well from what I've read in the synopsis. And it says that, you know, even though they get to travel and see all the beauty of the country, they also encounter some danger. Like, I don't know if they're gonna get chased by some bears or something, but that's kind of what it sounded like it could be to me. But they go through with her, with these different women, they go all through these different struggles as they are trying to deliver these books. And I have high hopes. I, like I said, I've never read this author before I've not even read the first page of this book that's all I've got from the synopsis but I will definitely let you guys know once I've read it if it's something you should pick up now I am super excited about the December book because as most of you know my favorite genre is mystery thriller and our December book is conviction by Denise Minna, which this book must be really taking off. I actually, as you can see, there's a Target uh, sticker, which I had to order it. Not even from my Target. I had to like special order it from another Target because Amazon said it would be three weeks because they were sold out. It was like sold out all over the place. And I don't know if it's because Reese made it a book or what, but it's selling out and it's not like super new. It's been out for like six months. So it, I don't know it's selling out big time. So I'm so glad, glad I got a copy of it. And I'm not going to lie because it's a mystery thriller, guys. I've already started it. I couldn't help it. And once you hear the synopsis, you're going to know why I could not help going ahead and starting into it. Okay, so our main character is Anna McDonald, and she's having her typical morning, you know, where she's got a husband and she's got children. She's making breakfast. She's, you know, making lunches for the kids to go off to school. And her husband basically comes down and says, yeah, I'm leaving you. Um, I'm going to take a vacation. It's with her best friend. Um, and we're going to take off for a while. I'm going to take the kids so you can kind of soak in that we're, you know, separate 
separating, even though, you know, she says from the beginning, she knows that their marriage isn't great. And so she doesn't think her kids are in danger or anything. And they're not, you know, he's not a bad guy. He's just, they've realized their marriage is not working. And then he's going to be taking the kids for a while. So just to distract herself, right? To distract herself from the fact she's going to be alone for a while. And she's got a process that she's, you know, getting a divorce. She decides to listen to a true crime podcast because she really enjoys them. And she thinks, okay, this will be a great distraction. And as she's listening to the podcast, she realizes she knows some of the people that they're talking about. And the podcast is about, obviously, about a crime that is unsolved. And she's going, wait a minute, I know who they're talking about. I know this person and that person. And she doesn't tell you exactly how she knows them because we keep hearing more and more of the podcast, which makes me think, now, you know, guys know I'm not into audiobooks. It's not my thing, but so many of you guys love audiobooks. And since I think maybe half this book, like I said, you can see I've read quite a bit. I'd say at least half of it is podcast. I'm about thinking that if you are an audiobook uh, reader that this would probably be a great one to do on audio because anytime you have a podcast, I've heard it's really cool to do on audio. And also just to sum it up, just, obviously this is coming from the synopsis. I mean, yes, I've read some of it, but also um, she realizes she needs to get on the run and go on the run because she knows a little too much. And that's all I really know. I don't want to tell you too much, but this definitely sounds like my kind of book. A woman who's listening to a podcast realizes she knows some of the people involved, realizes she needs to get on the move. Now, I don't know if she's guilty of doing something, if she just knows these people. Um, it doesn't give you that much information. You just know this podcast has spooked her and she's continuing to listen to it as she's traveling and trying to figure out a place to go. So we don't know why this podcast has her so upset, but it is so good so far. I am loving it and I can't wait to find out what the ending is because right now it is so up in the air and it really could be anything. And then my makeup book this month, I've been actually waiting for December to do this as my makeup book because it's called One Day in December and it's by Josie Silver. And this book sounds really good too. It is a romance, which is not usually my thing, but I actually think I might like this one. So from what I know, the main character is named Lori. She does not believe at love at first sight, but she's on a bus one day and she makes eye contact with somebody on the street, some man on the street, and feels this instant connection. Like, oh my gosh, that is who I'm supposed to be with. He is the one. And so she spends like a year looking all over the area, going to coffee shops, searching for this man and just having no luck, right? And then she goes, I think, to a Christmas party, if I'm remembering the synopsis correctly, or some kind of party she goes to, and her best friend is like, hey, I want you to meet my boyfriend. And it turns out the boyfriend that <laughs> is the guy that she's been obsessed with for over a year. And supposedly this book takes place over like 10 years. Um, so I don't know what is going to happen in those 10 years. I don't know if she's going to get the guy. I don't know, but it sounds really amazing. Like I said, I don't normally do romance. It's not that I haven't enjoyed romances. There's a lot of romances I have enjoyed. It's not just something, it's not something I usually kind of go for you know what I'm saying but this one sounds really interesting and I, I can't wait to see how it turns out so um, I'll definitely let you know if this is worth picking up as well so those are two books that I definitely think you should read and three books that I will tell you about next month don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter I will always follow you right back please leave any comments as far as if you've read any of these books or you've heard about these books I would love to hear your thoughts and I'll see you next time Bye bye